Um, okay, we're live. Now everybody's quiet. Well, I, <laughs> do you want to introduce us, or do you want me to back up and say what we were just talking about? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Happy Thanksgiving. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Happy yeah. Thanksgiving. So, so the conversation started out, as I said, it's awesome how we've been meeting just before a holiday. So it's like we're celebrating the holidays together for a little bit, you know? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and then. And then I said, up. what did I say? Where was I at Halloween? Yes, I said, where was I Halloween night? And I said, right here with James. <laughs> but I'm, I'm frequently with James, but I was not with him that evening because I was elsewhere. I was at what is called the Conjuring House because of the movie inspired by true events that happened at that house. It was at Round Top Farm in Harrisville, Rhode Island, where we were doing a live stream investigation. And it was just hunky-dory to spend Halloween night at, at the Conjuring House. Oh, my God, yeah. Would it was quite awesome. active, I will say. Hunky-dory, nice. Yeah. <laughs> were you, uh, were you on the radio good. yesterday talking about the Conjuring House? With your, we were. With yeah. your bro, right? <laughs> Yeah, we did a we did a special, uh, a one time okay. special, maybe uh, another special again in the future. But uh, it was Keith and Carl. Yes, and because we had my twin brother with me, and of course we were the investigators at the original, you know, investigation of nineteen seventy three, August and September. Yeah, August and September of nineteen seventy. You see, in the movie The Conjuring, they portrayed. I was one the year old. I was one year old. You <laughs> couldn't have come with me while you. I you would need some explaining. What's that smell? Oh, yeah. maybe Sabrina. Yeah, yeah. 1973. I wasn't even I wasn't even thought of yet. Oh my word. I wasn't even there. This is really inspiring me. Oh my god. All coming together at once. Well. <laughs> 18 years of age. I don't know you, you, uh, if you had that picture at the ready, maybe sometime. Uh, yeah, I, uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I had a picture of me when I was 17. James had it last night. We don't have it tonight, but uh, we don't have all that neat stuff. Why? Would we not good enough for neat I, stuff? I, I don't know why. <laughs> I thought you would have it in a file, in a folder forever. Well, actually, I think I could actually do this so he said he's gonna try something we're experimentative you know there we go i saw it just for a moment i saw it and i'll tell you about an experience that they're reminiscing can they see it yeah no. i no? can't i can't see anything see what yeah what are we looking for what are we looking at <laughs> what are we looking at uh, uh, uh i was sharing the screen you guys can't see that stuff no Not yet, no oh there we go all right here we go oh there we go all right hold on let me add it Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's Carl, the same year that I did the Conjuring House investigation. Wow. 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 That's wow. <laughs> Rocking out. Oh, yeah. He's, he's sexy. He's sexy. And then this is, uh, let's see, going to my five a little bit. bit. This is a secret, top wait, secret wait, stuff, guys. Wait a minute. Should I have this now. up? Is this like good stuff? <laughs> secret. Um, and then this is this is Carl at the Perrin family with Lorraine Warren with Carolyn Perrin in the basement. Oh, cool. oh wow. Oh, wow. Carl in the blue, of course, with the woman always holding on to Carl. That's Lorraine right there, right? Yeah. That's Lorraine, That's Lorraine Warren. yeah. The elegant Mrs. Lorraine Warren. Very cool. Who is this person in the front right here? That's Carolyn. That's Mrs. Carolyn Perrin. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, okay. it's, it's, you know, of course, the features are somewhat washed out. Stunningly attractive woman, a small and woman. Yeah, she loves it. And uh, some of her daughters are surrounding her. But we were getting a tour of the basement at the House of Round Top, 1677 Round Top Road in Harrisville. And that's when the Warrens were first introduced to the house. Hello, we, our team. Yep. Yeah. Wow. So you were out there at Halloween. So what's the the difference between 1973 and Halloween 2020? Hey, not much different. <laughs> I sound the same. <clears throat> well, it's you know, of course, new owners now, and then you know, uh, the whole fame and acclaim of of the Conjuring House is built up around the those occupants and the parent family own the house and the uh, the remarkable happenings there. 
But other than that, it's remarkably similar. Uh, the same manifestations occur. Mm. The decor yeah. is very much the same. Mm. Because the successive owner of Norma Sutcliffe and her husband, Jerry, they kept that house as it was, as yeah. it had been. They, they, did, they did very little renovation. They changed the, you know, where the library is now. It used to be a bedroom, mm -hmm. but other than that, it looks pretty much like it did when the, you know, some of the rooms rearranged. You know, like the parlor room used to be a kitchen, uh, but I recognized that when I first came back there after so long, and that was June of 2019, the day after the closing with the Heinzens, you know, Jen and Corey Heinzen. I was like, boy, this hasn't changed. Woo, you know. There was even a mirror on the wall that I recognized. I said, by God, I think that rectangular mirror, that's what the, the parents had. It's the same one. And I guess all the families who lived there kept it. Wow. Well, you know, the next one after that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then the you, know what, you know what I think sucks is is that it, it doesn't really look like the house in the movie. How cool would it be if that was the <clears throat> actual house? Oh, well, my way. I don't know why they didn't make it more like resemble that. Yeah, it's like a double decker house in the in the movie. Yeah, oh, it's like this but, old, yeah. beautiful Victorian, dark, uh, like oh, just yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's uh, the interior that they display in the movie, the sets, the interior, very, very similar to where the real house looks. On the outside, quite different. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> And no hang, and there's no hanging tree either, of course, in the front yard. Oh yeah, the hanging tree. That's, uh, that's mythology. Um, yeah. That mirror. I looked in that when I went in there in June of 2019, and I don't know what kind of hallucination, uh, optical illusion, what it was. I saw myself as I looked when I was 18 years of age. That's what. You, so you looked in the mirror, and that's what you you saw. And that, that's that face you saw, the younger face. That that was me. I looked. I mean, I had my red polo shirt on, and my reflection was moving as I was, but I didn't call for anybody because I knew if the Heinzens came in, the first thing, they, you know, it would be gone. They said, what are you looking at, Carl? I just, I had a sense of... I was wondering myself in 1973. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was good looking. You never believed me before. <laughs> uh, so I just, what I did was, that, you know, sensing it was not, it was fleeting, it was not going to last... I memorized it. I looked at myself for about a minute and a half. You know, I experimented. I could move. And my reflection moved with me, but I just looked younger and had long reddish blonde hair. When I went used the bathroom and you know, saw that mirror, they have a big mirror in their bathroom. What a bummer. Because I, I immediately saw the contrast. Not too many people have that experience. You know, like, whoa. That's not like a shitty bathroom. And they have a, they have a, what in that house they think is a time displacement. Andrea Perrin experienced it. Carolyn Perrin experienced it. Well, you have a time slippage. And I, that's what happened to me. I just didn't expect it to be oh. a magic mirror. Oh, the, so oh. that's like a claim? That's a claim of, of the people? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I didn't people. know that. Too many times to just dismiss it. I mean, yeah. Carolyn Perrin had a profound experience back when they owned the house, probably in 1972. She went into a room and uh, she saw two men seated at a table, a round table, and they were in well, like 18th century attire and they had pewter tankards. And these two apparitions turned and looked at Carolyn and, you know, with astonishment as she was looking at them. So I think for a moment, she was the ghost. Carolyn Perrin was the ghost yeah. to them. They're just the two dimensional plates, probably in motion. They oh, that, it's like that movie. Um, it's like um, the others. Mm. Yeah. The others where, you know, like who's the ghost. Yeah. How yeah. cool is that? Yeah. That's. Uh, I really think that that's what what it's like. I think that happens in occasion because other people have reported it. And in that house, this happened a couple of times. Andrea had a like experience, and that was mine. But I was not expecting anything paranormal there, or if anything, it was you know like a bump on the wall or hear footsteps. I didn't expect that mirror mm. to be a magic mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall. Was, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Bloody <laughs> Mary, yeah, the experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Tag along, Kenny. Oh yeah, Kenny. Oh yeah, Kenny. Uh, yeah, hey, you're more than welcome anytime. We have anytime. We have pretty much full access to that house. Do, yes. so. That's we'll awesome. Do. We'll invite you over to their house. Yes. Well, well, well I was supposed to. Sure. We'll just show up one day. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> we spent an hour and a half talking about that. Uh, uh, our experiences there, yeah. my brother and I, because we were James's guests last night, and Keith over here. And he was our moderator. And we just went along telling him our experience. The 
the episode was titled, and it was a conglomeration of uh, collaboration of duo demonology mm -hmm. and my brother's group near New England Anom Anomalies Research. They have a show called Ghost or Near. Mm -hmm. And so we combined our forces and did this interview, uh, dissertation more like. And uh, it went on for an hour and a half. And the title of the episode was Conjuring the Truth. Huh. Now, we didn't set out to be controversial or offend anybody, but some people had to have been, you know, rattled at their cages because it doesn't jive with the movie storyline, and people want to believe the movie because the movie is succinct. The movie has a definite beginning, drama in the middle, and then an ending, but real life is not like that. It just goes on with more instances. Yeah. We told our, you know, like a police report, no vitriol, no emotion, just, you know, this is what we, well, we laughed some. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, but this is what we experienced. This yeah. is true to life, and that's, you know, some people won't like it because, and, well, go on. Yeah, so, but not to, to cut Carl off, but not to talk, about, to the con con not to to talk about the conjuring a whole another hour, because we did it a whole another hour and a half last night. Oh, yeah. Um, if you want to watch that episode, it's on YouTube, Duo Demonology, our Facebook page, Good point. Oh, Carl's page, oh, yeah. Instagram, so our website, demonology.org slash podcast. There's many different ways you can watch it if you're interested. Cool. That's awesome. I think I'm going to check that out. Sounds interesting. I was supposed to go, but um, I forget what happened. It was COVID. Oh, COVID. Your work, yeah. your work. Well, 284 years later, it's still there if you yeah. want to come by. I just, I'm really sad that it's not that big Victorian house, you know? Yeah. But it's, so, it's really, it's really peaceful house. I am, yeah. I am it's really small. small. Is it small? I, I, you know, people are like, oh no, I would never sleep over. I'm like, oh, I would have crashed there yeah. in a heartbeat. It was, I, yeah. I was fine with that house. I mean, the library, like it was the bedroom that was for me, I was very drawn to that room. Mm -hmm. And that was the most experience I was having was in the, in that room specifically. But yeah, I would have just sat there all night and talked in that room. Cause it, is, it, it, it looks small. Is it? Sometimes you get small? answers. Yeah. Well, in that room. Yeah. Well, th there's a good theory on that too, is, you know, not to uh, bring up past owners in this because I don't want to get chased by Norma. That's the last thing I want because she's, Ooh. But um, um, <laughs> too late now. Yeah, yeah. I did. I brought her up. Oh, Neighbor God. and everything. Oh God! <laughs> but, uh, Mary, who actually passed away, that was his favorite place, and he passed away. So if you look at the ghost the if you go if you got look at ghost theory and like theory about like somebody attached to a certain location uh -huh. is attached to that library. So there is a lot of activity that happens in there. And, and it was like, male. It was definitely male too. Yeah, and it was so, very. I think Jerry still lingers in that library. It was so, very, very was, prominent. Well, I think I think that's the case. I think he lingers. That was his place of tranquility. That's where he lingers. Hey, my friend April. Yeah. Oh, she was there with me. Yeah, she was over here for dinner too. Yeah. yeah we had we a, also yeah. shared this. Does you make good pizza? paranormal observation we love that pizza she's gonna she's gonna be on on the 16th she's coming on so yeah 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 i'm excited to have her on uh sorry didn't mean to no that's a good divergent uh topic april's gonna be there yeah wow um yeah she said yes so that'd be awesome sorry i get distracted like you know Sorry. I just wanted to uh, relay the messages, <laughs> but the house looks small to me. Is it small? The rooms are not gigantic. It's uh, yeah. you know, I wouldn't say the house all over is small, but it has a lot of uh, you know cubicle rooms. Five rooms plus the extension, so six yeah. rooms technically, like five bedrooms. But... So, it, like, does does sound travel real? Like, can you hear people? Uh, their... Good question. Good question. It's the opposite, mm -hmm. Taryn. Um, really. The rooms have kind of a soundproof to them. You don't hear somebody talking much in the next room, and uh, unless they're loud, and then you, you don't hear it full volume. We don't know why that is. It is yeah. something. It's eerie. It's an eerie effect, but it's something in the acoustics yeah. unique to that house. Mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about, and I think I've only been somewhere once where that was like that. Where you would think, like, it, there, you, you would think there's no possible way you couldn't hear the person that was like right down the hall. Mm -hmm. you, we couldn't figure it out why it was so you felt like you were soundproof 
It's crazy. You would think in a house like that, of course, with it being so old. Has, like, has to be, you think it would be rickety and you yeah. didn't hear. Yeah. You'd be able to hear it very easily. But yeah, it was a solid house, but the only thing is when we were in the basement, um, the room that everybody, the owners were in, you could, I was able to hear the TV. So oh. that was the only room, like we were in the, the basement area where the, the chair is and uh, and you could, or like, oh, we, we were like, we got to tell them we could hear the TV. Like that, that was the only thing. That was the yeah. only thing. Everywhere else, it was pretty solid. Yeah, that's an extension too, so. Yeah, yeah. So how, so how old is the house? It was built in 1736. That, that so that house like it's the land was deeded to Roger Williams who founded Providence Rhode Island and uh, oh yeah. and you know the original owner was a family named Richardson a man and you know his family named Richardson and he was a member of the Arnold family too very prominent name in Rhode Island especially northern Rhode Island and uh, the house was bequeathed to uh, members of the family the Arnold family so the, the largest uh, family you know, our succession of owners was the Arnold family. It's also sometimes referred to as the Arnold house. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I wonder so, if anybody... Roger, Roger Williams founded Providence the same year that house was built. So that takes you back. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. And the, the wall, so, uh, the uh, wall is pretty uh, neat too. That's another draw. Is the wall and then the circle outside too? The circle. Yes, around. you remember that well. Yeah, it's very. Is that the? It was that the house that? Oh, they had the. Was yes. Is that? Is that? Is that a story? <laughs> What happened in the movie? Clap yeah. on ghost. <laughs> was right. that? Was that just like a, oh, an entertaining? Was or or did that really happen? Did she no. say that really happened? No. No. Nope. That's all right. That was that was a good that was a good add on because that shit was scary. <laughs> it was. <laughs> you the hands that. Oh my gosh! Like you're looking in the basement all of a sudden. I would. Oh my gosh! I think right. I would die. We can't, we can't deny that it wasn't a very well crafted movie. You know, James. Oh Wan. yeah, for sure. James Wan, James Wan made one of my favorite series called Insidious. So he did. Oh, yeah. I love movie. the Insidious. I love every So. And it's hard to find any of these movies that are really, really good, yeah, like Insidious or, oh, or like the first, first Conjuring and Enfield. <laughs> it's just like you don't. Know, there's nothing on anymore that really, really just grabs you. But I think there's another Insidious coming out. If I'm there not mistaken, yeah. 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 So yeah, it goes back. It goes back to, uh, it goes back to uh, is it? Moment, actually, isn't it? Um, so, but yeah, it goes back to him being a main role again in the, in the movie. Yeah, the conjure. Well, no, yeah. Insidious. Oh, Insidious. Yeah, yeah he's, he's actually in Insidious too. That's right. He, uh, <laughs> uh, Patrick Wilson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's used Patrick Wilson a few times. Patrick Wilson kind of became famous with the Phantom of the Opera. Mm -hmm. You know, the Gerard Butler yep. and all that. Uh, but Patrick Wilson portrays Ed Warren very well. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Vera Farmiga portrays Lorraine Warren. Vera Farmiga does, you know, she gets that likeness to Lorraine Warren and the way she dresses. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, they did it good. They both did, actually. And she's gorgeous. I just, yeah, yeah. she was beautiful. Yes. Yeah, they, they did a good job with it. This it was very, taste, it was tastefully done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a scene, as much as we say the, you know, the movie had little, if anything, to do with reality, except for the names, there is a scene where they, uh, actually, Lorraine Warren has a cameo appearance in that. It's when she, uh, Mrs. Perrin, Carolyn Perrin, first meets the Warrens. She's seeking them out for their help. Yeah. Uh, he's in a lecture hall. Yeah. And mm -hmm. a, I there's a brief cameo. Oh, yeah. uh, I know, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they show Lorraine and her daughter Judy are in the audience. Yeah, yeah. I remember that too. I do remember yeah. that. But when you see that scene, as, as far removed from reality as the whole movie is, when you see that scene, that's like looking at Ed and Lorraine. I was very well acquainted with Ed and Lorraine Warren. I had lectured with them. I investigated with them. And when you see that, it was like looking at Ed and Lorraine, that banter. They had a comic, comedic banter between them. And, you know, say, you know, like a uh, member in the audience says, uh, how do people address you? you know, Kooks. You know? And, uh, <laughs> and uh, they just, they, they were charming and 
very engrossing couple to watch and listen to. So if you see that scene in the movie, that's you have your chance to see Ed Lorraine in that sense. That's yeah, that's you know that's interesting because there's somebody else. Now I never met them, but um, I met uh, Christopher Lutz. Who was yeah. quarantine Quarantino now? But yeah. when I met him, you know, you just didn't know you didn't know what energy to expect. You know, um, but uh, surprisingly, he it was like he literally I felt like he had me in captivated in this bubble for like an hour while we talked. Like it was like the weirdest thing. <laughs> and he literally sat there and said, you know, um, the movie is not what happened, what? you know, yeah. and mm -hmm. just said that he was waiting for his mom to pass away before he came out with what yeah. like really went down. Well, I think there's a documentary. I don't know how long it came out, but there's a documentary about how it, it was actually all set up. The lawyer actually said, this is this is what you guys can do to get a lot of money. I forget the name of the documentary, but... Yeah, I know what one you're talking about. The one, it looks like he's like kind of... It's dark. And I, if it's the same documentary, yeah. it looks like he's in a basement or something or dark yeah. room. But what he said but what he said was when they... He said when they moved in, he's like, you know, I who knows if there was anything there or not. Right. But he said, my, my, my stepfather is portrayed as this hero in the movie when really he's yeah. in the basement and he's like trying to conjure, he's like say, do, doing the satanic rituals and trying to like get stuff uh -huh. going. He's like, so if there was something here, you know, that was just kind of feeding it, you know, uh -huh. he's like, but you know, they say he, you know, and that's why his stepfather was like trying to sue him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's a lot of that case. There's a lot of heresy. So much. Here's so much. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Real, it really is. But that was probably like a, a, an awesome conversation that I've had where. Good guy. Yeah. I mean, he, he is. He's awesome. No, he's good. I thought he was trying to attack the chicken, but. Yeah. What? There's what a do you got a turkey in there? Are you killing a turkey for Thanksgiving? In yeah, we house? are. Yeah. We, sl we sliced his throat. We're doing Aww. a lot uh, no, James. Even James? President Trump is pardoning the turkey. Oh, I know. Uh, my Trumpy bear. I thought he might. I thought he oh, might. Let's not get into politics. Let's not do that. We're <laughs> <laughs> Right. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But <laughs> you, you can't kill the turkey. Well, I thought he'd be the first president. Well, how do you say? Who do you think kills the turkey for you to eat on Thanksgiving? <laughs> you didn't. Oh, turkey. It's a well, you didn't. Nobody I know. She would have uh, hated South Philadelphia because we had the like turkey the street, they passed away the turkey. in its sleep. Well, guess what? Okay, it's like old Bella. I took the turkey out behind the bar. <laughs> Yeah. You know, this has all become very ugly. We are here for a paranormal. I know. It's like James hates me. Discussion. <laughs> of yeah. I know. Killing poor turkeys. Man. I know. All right, man. Well, some of those turkeys wouldn't have had existence if they weren't primed for, you know, a meal. That's yeah, right. You look at it that way. They They enjoyed their brief time on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was told. They just passed away in their sleep. Well, that's what they say. You know, they don't feel it. <laughs> My dad told me that. My dad told me that, and I believe it forever. <laughs> yeah. So, how was um, Halloween at the Conjuring? So, what, what, what did you wind up doing, or what did you experience beside the um, the nostalgic um, 1973? <laughs> oh, yeah. Here, 1970s. That's how I got to the 1980s. Oh, and wait, why wasn't James with you? Because that's kind of odd. Well, I had my son, and I was uh, oh. trick or treating. He was oh. he was a ghostbuster, so we were ghostbusting. Yeah, he's so dressed like oh. my god, I love him. Oh yeah, he is so adorable. Thank you. Well, a live stream through Facebook was conducted, and uh, uh, Jay Prather is you know the specialist in these uh, ITC uh, units yeah. that he gets, where he's well, he develops them, you know sound audio recording devices and he's improving on what's you know already there and uh adapting it for ghost hunting so jay trailer set up uh an expansive evp session electronic voice phenomena and we've got some good results coming through his machines you know uh, the ghost box as well answering our questions like uh, we got the impression 
for a while that the house did not want some people there and wanted other people there. You know, like, like please go. You know, <laughs> you want this person here? No, I don't. You know, like I mean, it was really it would have like you know three word sentences, but it, you know had it was answering our questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I didn't know the personnel involved, I'd say, well, this must be rigged. This, you know, they just want to have a good show. But no, it was right, right, right. It was good. You know? Yeah, and see, that's a big thing that you can't. <clears throat> it's that's something that it will never be provable. You know, right. like if I go on an investigation with Sabrina and me and her are standing in the same room, and she says, "I see something right there," mm -hmm. I'm gonna believe her because I trust her. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like she doesn't have to prove anything to me. Exactly. But if you're going with people you don't know well, you, you right. have to you would totally one thousand percent. You're never sure. Everything. You're never yeah. sure. You're like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, that's a kook right there. What are you seeing? What drugs did you take before you came? <laughs> you that's why it's always good to go with people you trust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of it has to be that. Like I have experience, like my mirror experience. Right. Yeah. You know, because I have that level of veracity and people have worked with me, they know I was telling the truth, but it's a bummer they didn't see it. Two months, two and a half months ago, James and I were at the Oliver House with some friends, and uh, as our tour guide was telling us at Oliver House, and uh, where's that in Mass? Uh, that it's it's Middleborough, Middleborough, Mass. Middleborough, yeah. Mass. And uh, our tour guide was giving us the narration or uh, narrative of the house's history. And when we were down in the basement, the earthen floor there, she said she found phalanges, finger bones down there. They were turned over to the state police forensics, and she hasn't seen them. I don't think they're going to get really? back. Really? Oh. And uh, she had a group of psychics there. The psychics told her that there was a woman buried under that soil, that dirt floor. Before she oh. uh, uh, That was before then, yeah. And then she found the finger bones. Well, she's telling us that. And at that moment, it was 7.55 p.m., uh, I saw something bright, uh, like a purple glow out of my right peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. So I turned to look, it didn't move with me. I turned and I looked at this thing. I thought it was an electric panel I hadn't noticed, but it was hovering. It was basically rectangular. It looked like it unscrolled and it was a woman's face mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. dark hair piled up on top of her head. Just when, just when I heard I was talking about the, uh, that it was a, they think it's a woman buried there. And then it rolled up again. It didn't look actually like a scroll. It just had that effect, like mm. a screen. Oh, it yeah. Collapsed again. Yeah. Now, what I, maybe I'd be more convincing if I went, guys, guys, yeah, uh, I got to tell you. I gotta, but I don't do that. I just, yeah. I say, you know, mark the time 7.55. Yeah. So they'll remember I said that. Yeah, nobody else experienced it either. But in They the experienced city, other things. But we all had a personal experience and shared experiences as well like we're hearing footsteps you know where we actually weren't at at one point like you could say we were in that room and of course would you know uh, echo the sound after we left the room but in that same format we never I had entered that room yet but we were still hearing footsteps um so we were all having a little bit of experiences personal things atmospheric changes um, you could say static electricity because of the temperature change, because of people being introduced into the uh, to the location. But you know, there was de definitely an uneasy feeling. It's not like it's something is demonic or evil there. But we we all definitely had experiences yes. which correlated to his experience down in the basement in some form or fashion. I also heard spirit bumps. There was a room yeah. upstairs. A toddler had been scalded fatally, and uh, oh. She was taken upstairs and she died three days later in that room. That's historically documented, 1841. Oh, my and God. Just, you say a small room. I went into that small square room and I heard spirit bumps. I've heard them before in other places. It's like, puck, 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 and they're traveling along the edge of the wall. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of that. If somebody else came in the room, they just stopped. You know, I've heard that at Slater Mill site. I heard that when I was in a TAPS investigation before the show Ghost Hunters. Well, actually, go, go some of this was going on, but we had a separate assignment early on, and uh, heard them uh, travel from the living room to outside of the side, sidewalk. <coughs> Excuse me, but uh, so I have heard the spirit bumps before, so I know they're genuine, especially since I was the only one in the room at the time. Mm. Again, I wish my colleagues could have heard it too. So I, I don't, I'm not sure, but I'm going to share this question. Yeah. Please, but, yes. But uh, you know. Not sure where this is going to go. I don't know if it's somebody just, you know, 
What 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 history and what property? The Oliver yeah, House. I think it was the Oliver House, house. We we're just talking about probably. We hear a lot of that history, and I even recognize one yeah. of the you know, uh, one of the owners of the or somebody who occupied the house for a while, Sylvanus Brown. I recognized him from my time at the historic Slater Mill. You know, I said, was he in the Navy? Yes, he was in the uh, Navy under yeah. he, Admiral Isaac Hopkins, and so I know that was him yeah. that I heard about. Yeah. We got a big history lesson. Of the, uh, oh yeah, the hell, he, Benjamin Franklin, Franklin had visited that house. Wow, the Son of Liberty had taken over that house. Uh, you know, it was uh, acquainted to be. Um, well, what, what did you call? What house was it? The Oliver House. Yeah. The yeah. Oliver House. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Benjamin Franklin's been there. Uh, it was a separate. It was it was owned by separatists. Yeah, it was named so, for Judge Peter Oliver. Yeah. You know, and uh, our guide, our docent, had us put our hands. She said, when you go up the stairs, hold the railing because you're touching a rail that Benjamin Franklin touched, possibly Patrick Henry. And she Isn't said, that oh, crazy? Isn't, Isn't that crazy? crazy? Yeah. It's pretty crazy when you. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's one of the things I love about old it's houses. That's the yeah. one you're yep. there, probably. Yeah. Just walking in the same footsteps or touching the well, same anybody. Yeah. People. That was in there like 200 years ago or 150 years ago. Like walking through a house like that. That's why I love. Oh, even as much as the paranormal activity there, I was you know, thrilled to do that. I'm glad she told us that. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> so like the older, the better. <clears throat> like last like year. I think I was at the oldest place I've ever been, and it was like I had chills the whole time I, I was there. Know. What was it, 1629? Really? Where we were wow. at, where was that, West Virginia or Virginia? Virginia. So we were in Virginia, yeah, and uh, we were standing on a property. It was started in 1629, and it was like where the first Thanksgiving was held. Yes. All kinds of stuff. It had so much history. That's and cool. I was just like, I, I can't even wrap my brain around with the feeling I'm having right now. It's the energy is crazy. Mm. So the old, I say the older the better. I love it. Yeah, it's even like it, it's even like our uh, favorite place, Summer Mansion, you know, like uh yeah. Tom Lincoln was possibly there or was there. So right. even like pieces of like George Washington's pose with the, the you know the old stone that used to have been there. Like stuff like that. It's like when you when you're in historical places with yeah. the icons of his, especially United States history. It's just fascinating, especially if you're patriotic and you're a person that loves this country. Like, just to be part of uh, what is part of pre influence to where we are now. It's absolutely definitely. Yeah. So I and so I think that's and I think a lot. I think a lot of paranormal investigators have a little bit of that. You know what I mean? Mm. But for for me personally, that's mostly like I just love being in, mm. you know, and just all that energy. I love that energy. Yeah, like uh, um, Greg was on, you know, the fort as well. Yeah, fort uh, different. Yeah, history right there. It's awesome. You know, it's it basically helped George Washington. You know. Yeah. So, so all that stuff is so cool. Pretty crazy. I think. Yeah. But anyways, I don't know. Did I do this again? What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it is with paranormal. There are such divergent topics. You, you, you <laughs> I just keep on going all over the place. Oh, you make it interesting. Sabrina wants make to show it. something. What Sabrina wants? No, to I mean speaking of uh, Ben Franklin. Okay, like there's oh, yeah. a church on um, on Market Street in Philadelphia called Christ Church, and Lord they Christ actually Christ. and I go often just for lunch. At, at my break time and sit in the pews because George Washington was sitting in there. Ben Franklin was sitting there, you know, John Hamilton was sitting there. All these people were sitting in this church uh, that, that has been in Philadelphia. So it's remarkable. So each, all the pews have show, and I think, uh, what do you call it? Even Ben Franklin's um, where he was baptized, like his baptismal, like where you, with the holy water, I, for, I can't think of the name that you call it, but that's there. I mean, That's it's awesome. like it's like all the people who are, um, you know, on the Constitution, like all these names are there. Some of them are buried there. Yep. So it's just amazing. So if you ever if you like that, if you want you know, when when it's talking about sitting in the same spot, these people were sitting. That's yeah. something if you I mean, I'm, it's just the history of that. And then you walk down the street and then there's Ben Franklin's. Uh, what do you call grave? Mm -hmm. And then yeah, they have right. all the pennies sitting on the grave because they say, and I try to do this every once in a while was, is, is 
put a penny on there to see if he'll throw it back because right, that, right, that, right. The, this the ghost uh, fable um, in in Philadelphia wanted them. So if you're ever downtown, definitely if you like that stuff, that sounds awesome. I didn't even know that. It is yeah. incredible. Old city neighborhood. It's an old city. Old it's just great. Yeah. It's just amazing. I, I, it's crazy. I, I chase history. You know, like I've been one of the few fortunate people. You know, I've been to San Antonio three times, but I was one of the few fortunate people that have been able to investigate Alamo. And that was wow, uh, that's an, an awesome. amazing feeling just to investigate that place. Just like just to be in it. Just yeah. to be in it. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Just to be in it. <laughs> and then to be allowed to investigate it for sure. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, that would be my Betsy thing. Roth I, you know, what? the Betsy Roth house. I know I know SJGR did it, but we never got to do it. That yeah. is like a bucket list, too. I would love yeah, to go to yeah, Betsy yeah. Ross house and do that. Right. I heard that's like incredible. Yes. Yeah, it's right. like really well, old history. Well, come to Rhode Island and we'll show you the interesting stuff. We can make Rhode Island seem very interesting. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you hit the high points, the paranormal sites, yeah, we could give you. Yeah. A when tour of H.P. Lovecraft's Providence. Yeah, old Providence. He was born and lived in Providence. Yeah. He was very attached to his own city. We can show you the haunted Ramsdale factory, which is uh, contended to be the, the most haunted site in Rhode Island. Yeah. And it is. Uh, oh, well, we could show. I, I wish Mill, even though we could get in there. We can't get in there now anymore where I was for yeah. four years, but we can show you the exterior of Slaterville and tell you oh. some stories there. Cloud Hill Victorian well, Mansion, yes. which is a, ge a hidden gem that most people don't know about. It's it's, it's, a, it's the only one of the only Gothic Victorian mansions that exist in the country. Yeah, Cloud I Hill. so want to see that. Warwick, Rhode Island. That uh, when there's seismic activity, when there's an earthquake, before or after the earthquake, there are manifestations. The ghosts come out. Mm. Wait, what? what's that? What was that place called? In Cloud James Hill, Cloud the mansion. Yeah. In, the mansion, the Victorian. And, the East 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 East. and that is uh, on the border of uh, Warren, but East Greenwich. And that uh, it is when they, when they have an earth tremor, any seismic activity brings the ghost out, and nobody knows why. Something yeah. it changes something. Maybe it creates a rift in the dimensional fabric for principles we we don't understand. But the well, I mean, that's like that is like that's a perfect. like a seismic thing. Wouldn't that be like? And like a lot of energy just well, yeah, it generates energy. You know, you've got this you know, static electricity is going wild. It yeah, batteries. So that's probably has something to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's a hidden place. It's a hidden gem. They don't really allow investigations there. We, I think, uh, Kent Cost and his yes. team, and then of course, um, I've had the fortunate ability. Carl has as well to to check out the place. Yeah, you can do there. tours there. You can do regular tours there, but it's just such a beautiful place, man. I wish I wish more people knew about it. Yes. Well, now more people will. Mm -hmm. Now they do. Yes. Yeah. No. I want. I want to see this. Play. I want to see that the God. I want to see it. Oh, you could be the guest of Duo Demonology. Did you just flash me again? No, I'm seeing if I, <laughs> if I can pull it up again. What's going on? <laughs> Anthony oh, has a place and he wants to know if you uh, visited. What is it? The oldest bar? It's the oldest continuous bar, operated bar in the country. It's White Horse Tavern, I think is what it's called. In Newport, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's right. Really they didn't take off a decade or two. They've been, you know, that's in Newport, Rhode Island. James is going to look up, uh, see if we can find Cloud Hill and he can maybe project it for us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're closed. They're probably closed. Uh, you think they're closed? Well, I don't know what's going nah, on. No, they still have, are they operating? I wonder if they're operating. Well, the White Horse Tavern is, yes. Yeah, is this still open? Yeah. No, we got Victoria. Uh, Cloud Hill. That's what I just told you about the mansion on the. No, that's uh, that's. Uh, I never. That's you know what? Day, I used mind. to live in that area. I've never heard of Groden Mansion before. Oh, that's towards the old neighborhood. There's a mansion, but I don't think that's. Well, how are you guys seeing it? This huh? wait, uh, wait, O'Hara is it talking yeah. about? He's yeah. from Ben Salem. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a mansion in the in the Chamonix Valley, and mm -hmm. I know that area pretty well, but I've never heard of the Golden Mansion. It's got to be by the water. Is it by the water? It has to be. Uh, <laughs> With all the other Whatever. mansions, like water. yeah, they have to be. You and know. Salem has all the mansions along the. the I'll have to check that out because I, right I don't remember ever hearing about that. Mm -hmm. And I've grown up in that area. We gotta get some beer from the brewery. How can I make it bigger? Can you guys see it? Oh yeah, it's a it's a tiny mansion. Oh, that's that beautiful. is not that's beautiful. Yeah, oh, it's that's beautiful. a brand of breakfast potential. Haunted brand of breakfast potential. Man, man. Uh, what did I do? Nothing's haunted. Roden Mansion. Mansion. Where'd it go? Oh, did I, I do that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is what's the the inside? Is uh, 
it has someone actually has some of the, I don't know if they would want to say this, but they'll say it in the tour, but they have some of the oldest items uh, wow. in England. They have things from uh, the dynasty. Um, they were gifted items from uh, emperors over in China. And wow. now, I think one of the items they have is like a million dollars, something like crazy like that. Like there is something. They have yeah. an old like, uh, grandfather clock there. So. Yeah. Whoa. Oh Every room has its own architecture, yes. its own woodwork. Yes, there's the Egyptian room. It's, it's Egyptian room, it varies yeah. room to room depending on the era and how they decorate. Yeah. Because Egyptology was big in the 1920s. And that's called what now? Clouds Victoria, Cloud Hill Victorian Mansion. Clouds Hill Victorian Mansion. Clouds Hill. Here in Rhode Island. We'll take Wait, where? Yeah, we can take you there if you guys are down here. I would love to go there. Yes. I would love to see inside. I would love to just go inside. It's a thing. It's a gothic Victorian too. Uh, you know, just like it's crazy. Yeah. You guys That's have awesome. you guys have Newport Beach. I mean, there's a lot of mansions and a lot of people. Yes, yes. yes. That was the the exteriors. That I was don't. The, I don't think I've ever been to Rhode Island. Yeah, yeah Salve, Salve Regina. Salve, Salve Regina is where all the mansions are. It's a hmm. great place. Yeah. yeah. Everyone wants to have their, their house on the historic places list. And when I went down, the last time I went down there was years ago, four years ago, maybe. Wow, it's been a while. And you see all the plaques and everyone's doing like making sure they keep up with it. And oh, it's just amazing down there. Oh, those, those homes are just, everyone just tries to keep up with the Joneses, yeah. they have, you know, because they have a lot of plaques. Yeah, everyone, everyone wants to show off their home. Yeah, yeah, they have the money definitely. to. The historical society too is very anal retentive. Oh, right. yeah. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah, they yeah. are. Don't touch your yeah. thing. Yeah. Don't yeah. sit there. Yeah. Don't breathe yeah. on our furniture. It's their, their house. The paint has to be right. Mm -hmm. You know, it needs to be lead paint too. You know. Serious <laughs> though, it's wow. the, the very hey. old they very keep it to this. No changes yet. No, you're not allowed to have changes. Folks, you're of an age. You're younger, like. Taryn, thirty yet? Yeah. Oh, I love you. I love you. Love you too. <laughs> and that the uh, that was the exterior setting for a gothic soap opera uh, that ran from 1966 to 1971, and that was called Dark Shadows. Oh, yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. Dark Shadows. My mom. And you, when you see those settings, well, the old house that they had that was in New York, uh, Collinwood, the big mansion of the Collins family. That's actually Seaview, Seaview Terrace uh, Mansion in Newport, Rhode Island. You can go there and see Collinwood and the exterior, the, the Cliffs Bluff, the uh, Cliff Walk. That was the Widow's Hill in, in Dark Shadows. And when Dark Shadows came on with the surf, that was filmed in Newport. That's where they got the title from. Dan Curtis went with a, his uh, cameraman. And his cameraman So what do you say we go down to Cliff Walk and film some Dark Shadows? Hmm. And Dan Curtis had his title. Wow. Wow. That is pretty cool. Interesting. My my thing is I just want to move to Gettysburg. <laughs> and Cheers. We get a we get a drink to that. Yeah. You mentioned it's a tradition that we think it's no, but I but I say I just say this just because but if Rob moves with me, he would have to become a park ranger so that and he would have to take the <laughs> night shift so that I could go on the in the park at night and I don't get in trouble. And investigate. <laughs> That's hashtag life goal right there. <laughs> why don't you become a park ranger? Yeah, why don't you be the park ranger? Because I I can't do that. He's got why? military. He's military background. Yeah, like you'll get right in there. He yeah. said, "Do you know that Gettysburg is what did you say it was? The third. It's the most popular requested by any range. Like because when you sign up to be a ranger, you get you can you have to go wherever they say you got to go. Right. Like you can't. You can't request it, but it's like takes forever to get into Gettysburg. Yeah, you guys sure. should open up a ghost tour uh, business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you couldn't be in the park pass. Yeah. You know. It allows. Yeah. I want to. I, I want to just pull out a sleeping bag and <laughs> fall asleep somewhere in the middle of the park. <laughs> just lay oh. there. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. You. It would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I would have fun. Yeah, so, you're actually waking up here like gunfire and cannon fire and stuff like that. Like you're like, ah, ah. <laughs> that would be awesome. It's very common. I mean, I I mean I've been there so oh, many times, so that's the only won. place I can yeah. say <laughs> that's where I've had the most experiences because that's you know, I've been there so many times. 
Wow. So. Yeah, it's such a great place. It really is. Oh. It seems like it knows you. Yeah. Talk about that 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 energy. I mean, you just no matter where you go, you feel it. Yeah, thousands and thousands of people perished within days. It was yeah. one of the most intense battles. It was. Yeah. It's it literally Gettysburg is like I always say it's like the heartbeat of our nation, and I'm so patriotic. So being there is just like yeah. a supercharger for just you know it just kind of mm. cleanses my soul. I'm like I got to go to Gettysburg. Oh. I need a cleansing. I want Anthony in the background. So spooky right now. It's like there's a floating head. Is he doing that deliberately? No, no I don't think he's doing so. He's just a no. there. <clears throat> there you go. Oh, he did it? Yeah, no, he was behind Sabrina. You can see his head. It looks like he was floating in the back. <laughs> Which I've seen. I brought seen an before. element to the show. <laughs> Hey, the last time I was on it, don't be surprised. Back in there for some reason, uh, one of the uh, one of the regulars that comes on says, "What's that in the background?" There was a shadow. I'm like, "What's going on?" And I yeah, looked, and all of a sudden, the lights started flashing and everything right. shut down. I'm like, "Holy it's, shit!" It's true. We had yeah, it was experience on live. Crazy. crazy. And that's, that's not crazy. the first time because somebody said, "What's the what's it what's going on in the kitchen area?" So people, for some reason, see something mm -hmm. going it's on in there. Right. All right, we're gonna do something different for the first what? time in Paranormal Brew. Well, what are you Carl, gonna call the Ouija uh -oh. board? We're gonna communicate. Through a Ouija board under the couch or a bed, you know. <laughs> you just have a Ouija yeah. board pulling out of your pocket anywhere you go. <laughs> nah, yeah, on your keychain. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, you know, as demonologists, of course, that is anathema to us. You know, any kind of spirit communication is it's our toy belt. It's like our Batman belt, you know, yeah. your utility belt. We pull out a Ouija board. Don't make me I, break on a Ouija board. I put it on a Ouija board. I can grab it really quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Ouija's Guinness World of Records, we have the smallest Ouija board. It's the size of this small. It's the smallest. No, I'm just kidding. You got it? <laughs> speaking of Ouija board, speaking of Ouija boards, um, Anthony just got a picture of his uh, spirit box from Bob and Gina. Yeah. So if I don't know if you saw it, it's like it's really have, cool. So we yeah, can't wait cool. to get it. Mm -hmm. It's well, Egyptian it. theme, yeah. It's like Egyptian theme. So it has so I, well, I, you know, I sent her the pictures. So I I said I got the God of all gods, and that's I'm I'm in raw. So he, he was represented by the Ram, and then he's on top. Going to make sure he's represented on top. He's got to be number one. Yeah. And on the sides, it is <laughs> the first Trinity, uh, divine Trinity, really. I mean, I guess some had other ones, but was uh, Osiris, Isis, and their inbred uh, divine child. <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> Horus, who was depicted as a falcon. Horus, you know the story of a horse. Oh, <laughs> oh my yeah, the third eye was a genetic mutation from all that inbreeding. You know? <laughs> the eye of horse. <laughs> well, oh, we're gonna get in trouble. Sorry, oh, we're in trouble. Oh, please forgive. Please forgive us. Oh, please my sorry. Well, let's, let's do some more things that we need forgiveness for. Let's say. <laughs> uh, no, but that uh, it is thought that that was what there was uh, an inspiration for the Holy Trinity. Yep. Was that the Osiric tr the Trinity? You know, that predated it. Yeah. And uh, in fact, where do we get Christmas from the Saturnalia, December 25th? Because Jesus' birth would have been sometime, you know, by, you know, deciphering the Bible, the, the biblical accounts, that it would have been sometime in April, mm -hmm. April you know, in the spring. Yeah. You know, that's that's funny that you say that because somebody, didn't you just say the other day that nobody really knows when he was born? Like they. Your hair glow. Yeah, it's not. Why do we get Robin here? Why is he in yeah, the background? Just like bring him on. <laughs> you, can, you know, by inference, you can you know deduce where when Jesus was just born, but it's not stated chronologically. Right. His birthday was that, but we take it traditionally to be December twenty fifth. But actually, that was yeah, but it had to come from somewhere. Where did it come from? That was the day of conceivement. That's when he was conceived in technicality. So people think birth and conceivement is the same thing. Well, and they could connote yeah. that to be like you know. Yeah. That's when he actually came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in terrestrial life. Yeah, yeah. 
Something from the Saturnalia. Mm -hmm. But you, you will win, the winter solstice represents sort of like the death of God, and then they yes, yeah, the death. In, it's like a rebirth. It's like he's coming in as yeah, really facing the, the pagan gods, mm -hmm. so to speak. I mean, that's one theory or one idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I like to delve into the dark side. Dark being equated with mysterious, you yes, know, known, mm -hmm. and a hint of forbidden. But this always fascinated me. In fact, when my brother and I were growing up, uh, we, I was the evil twin. <laughs> you still <laughs> are. <laughs> he, when when we made these costumes, put them together, a uh, little help from my mother. When Keith, my twin brother, and I were five years old, we would play outside probably when we were four, he was the angel and I was the devil. Hmm. And my first Halloween costume was a devil costume, so. Oh, and my first my, Halloween my costume was, was an angel. Me too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I was, I was an angel. <laughs> oh, she's, got to to the, she's got to go to the lavatory. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't know what she's got. She's over. Then I was like oh, Madonna. Really then I was like Madonna for six years yeah. in a row. Madonna for oh, six years. Oh, wait, wait, wait. She's, oh. She wait, here we go. We got pictures here. We got some oh, incriminating watch out, evidence. Watch out. Oh, let's see. Oh. oh, see, I was an angel. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so innocent, too. Keyword was. <laughs> she became yeah. sophisticated. Looks like a little that. baby cherub. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, see yeah. what I'm wearing here. I get questioned about this sometimes. Sometimes okay. I've had a cross on, but you know, you see, this is. Can you, get a okay. you, you may be oh, able yeah, to. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I noticed it earlier, and I was going to. It's oh, so wow. funny that you brought it up because I was going to ask you. I have a reflective ring here, too. That's. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have the same Benedicts I gifted them, too. But. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. Right here. That is, uh, that's the sigil of Lucifer. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the. Like Lucifer, that's on ABC. Yeah, he's sophisticated. Yeah, he's urban sophisticated. No, well, it, yeah, it's I uh, love that Lucifer. To me, <laughs> yeah, he's he's a hottie. No, he's a hottie. Lucifer was very attractive. Well, uh, very objectively, I can. Right. Well, yeah. 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 Actual no. historically. No. Fire has to be. Has to be tempting. Oh. 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 Back to that. You know, there's a unique dichotomy in religion and in faith. We always get back to the bad guy eventually. You know, because there has to be a bad guy to be a good guy, or, or you think so anyway. That's the theodicies. Yeah, you have to have. Good well, I think that it's with anything. You have, in order to have happiness, you have to have sadness. In order to have bad, you have to have good. I mean, or else you appreciate them. Know any different? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I know you can only appreciate the good when you've been waiting for the evil or subjected to it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but that just to me it means enlightenment, it means discovery. You know? Mm -hmm. Did you just swap an orb away? No, I don't know. I don't know. Something was like right here. That's a dark particle. <laughs> yeah. Get it right. No. <laughs> <laughs> we lost people. We had a lot of viewers, and now it dropped. After we talked about the Ouija board, it was like all over. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it dropped like flies. It was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to talk about Lucifer. They're gonna love that one. <laughs> I think that's exploration. I think we should talk about it at least, and you know, oh, it's like nice. another question: How many people here have actually seen a ghost? You know, in our our host here, how many, have you seen a ghost like that? You you know it was something different. You know, yes. something scary. Yeah. You have. It doesn't yeah. happen often, but yes, I no, have. Rarity. I've Rarity. seen an angel. <laughs> oh my word! I don't know why the angels don't get as much press as the demons. So they should. Well, there are angelologists, but we're not them, of course. <laughs> well, <laughs> but you have to have some kind of uh, study in in uh, angelology if you're a demonologist. You've got to know, you know. That's why right. these spirits are believed these celestial beings that were not human, you know, and that's what an angel is as well. The other end of the spectrum, there's a polarity there. You got, you know, the demonics and the, the angels, and they both have rank and files in tradition. But I've known people who had encounters with angels mm. that they can't explain away, and I believe them. Mm -hmm. I did too. I have a recording. I'll let you listen to one time. Yeah. That's awesome. You have a recording of an angel? Yeah, let's go back. We want. Yeah. Yes, I, so I had an experience, and uh, uh, 
there was somebody that was under the influence and um, that there was no solution. He's talking about me. <laughs> no. Uh, and there was no solution. There was no solution yeah. at site that we could physically do. Like I exasperated every prayer, every deliverance ritual, every even performed some spectrums of the rite of exorcism, the solemn rite of exorcism on this person, and uh, nothing actually had worked. And I d definitely did not, do not believe that this person was in a psychological state. Like I don't think that they were enacting this. Um, but um, there was a transition within this person. And uh, I noticed it and we felt it through atmospheric change. And, um, you know, there was that dread to lightness. Like it felt like all lights were intensified. You know, it, it was just a different feeling. And I said, well, I think what most people don't do um, in, in the moment is I said, record this. And right. we, we had actually asked uh, intelligent what I, I, I can, I don't think it could ever play it. Maybe it'd be a personal thing, but I asked like, questions about like god and stuff like that that people don't maybe not want to hear but yeah we i definitely believe i actually had an experience that's with amazing angelic, angelic possession or angelic interjection and uh we recorded the session wow i don't talk about it much uh so this is kind of like uh, uh a vip yeah. access to to that but yeah no i do have i do have a recording of it i the only reason i remember talking about angels is this this for people that are interested, there's this lady Lola going around, um, and she's writing a very uh, influential book on angels and people's experiences with it. And she had reached out to me because of, uh, another friend of mine knows of this situation. Not many people do. And she I wonder if I wonder if I would, she would come on because I never heard of anything like that. Yeah, I never can, even thought about that. You know what I, I mean? I think you got in touch with Lola, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so she's writing it, and uh, I have still not sent her the recording, but of course, told the story. But um, yeah, no, it's, it was just a fascinating time. Like, we always talk about our demonic encounters or our yeah. rare and demonic encounters, you know, five cases per oh, yeah. one of us, yes, uh, in the length of the times we've done this. But that was my only time mm -hmm. I've ever dealt with an angelic being that I do believe was angelic. So, wow. you know what? Um, it's funny because uh, like it, mine came with uh, a p more personal than at a at an uh, at a paranormal like investigation or anything. I was just like at my lowest, you know. It wasn't that long ago. It was like two years ago, and I'm sitting here. I'm going through a, a really huge change in my life and I was um, definitely ready to do my surgery and everything. And I'm sitting on my bed and I'm just like in tears. And I just so happened to turn around and the flat um, of that the angel was there. And I'm like, holy shit. It's the angel that I have on my arm, which is, which was the one that when I first went, I went to a mediumship class, um, the woman was like, you know, uh, you know, she was like, okay, draw the picture of who your guide was, who your angel was. And I drew this picture mm -hmm. and it was, the, and, and like how many years later, it must've been 10 years later, I'm seeing a flash of this woman that, you know, I, I drew her out of what was in my head. That's I had cool. somebody tattooed awesome. on my arm and then I wind up seeing that at my lowest point um, about two years ago. She's just like right That's behind awesome. my bed. And it was just pure as day. I'm like, I cannot believe everything that I thought of in my visions actually just put, it was just at the right. side of my bed. It happened and, to you that being your lowest day too, Sabrina, right? Huh? What you were experiencing emotionally at that, psychically at that time, you said it was at your lowest day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, you know, it was my end of my marriage, you know, something oh, yeah. happened in the marriage. And like, I'm like, you know, what the, what did I do? You know what I mean? Right. And I was going through medical issues at that time too. And just like, everything was just like, boom, you know, like, and, and there she was. And it was like, it was confirmation, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely confirmation. And David, <laughs> Dana does have a good story too. So Dana, yeah, I never knew. Um, the yeah. only the only thing I can say is I was I was in a car with somebody yeah. who um, learned of uh, like he went from so if if so if a person was to go from being a one year old to being 
a college student in 24 hours. That's kind of what happened to him when it came to the paranormal world. He had no interest in it, knew nothing about it. And in 24 hours learned about discernment because he had to. Mm. And it was like very like he was, he saw my dad a couple of times and then, you know, we were somewhere where he was like, you know, it just hit him really fast. And then we were in a car in the car one night. And I think something was there that shouldn't have been there. And we worked through it. And I kept on in my head. I was praying to St. Michael because yeah. I have him tattooed on my back. I, I feel that mm -hmm. that's my one of my guardian angels. So I was just praying to St. Michael and whatever. I don't know why I did it because I'm usually not like that. Sabrina knows this. Like I'm totally, you know, but anyways, um, he threw up, started crying and then didn't really remember much of what he said or what happened, but did tell me that at one point he was touching the, I don't know what the breastplate of the armor. Oh, wow. Breastplate of righteousness. Of, of the St. Michael. He said it was St. Michael. And he said that it, the, the armor had like, you know, like how it would do like the half a loops or whatever. He said one of those was probably three times the size of his hand when he put it up. He said it was, he was so humongous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They he are. Said, yeah. He said they're, was, they're, they're, they're huge. huge. He said, I was afraid to look up. I didn't look up at him, but I knew it was him. And he said, I don't know why I was afraid to look up. You know, he's like, but I was, but I knew it was him. And he's, and that's when he came to the point of, when he was like throwing up and crying and you know what I mean? But that was like the last thing he remembered. And going back on that, I believe that story because of who it was. You know what I mean? Like I know they wouldn't have bullshit something like that. And it's so funny how they say that they, these, these, um, the archangels are so large. Um, you know, it's like everybody explains this this huge figure that's like bigger than like, even like the. They are Titanic. They're bigger. They're huge. Well, like yeah, I've never heard that until he said that. Yeah, I never heard that until he said it. I I like then I looked it up and I was like, oh, okay. I did a I did a exorcism on a house one time, and the woman who was with me, um, she was a medium, and she's like, as I was praying, she's like, you saw. She said, you saw St. Michael behind you. He was like, like this huge giant just protecting you as you're saying these prayers. And I'm like, you know, it's so funny because I, I feel it as when you're doing these prayers, you feel that protection, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like that, that, you know, and the same thing even with church. I, th I see it in church too. Like, you know, when, when the priest is there and they're standing there and they're doing um, the communion and they're doing everything that they're supposed to be doing for their ritual. And you could see the Archangel Michael, like literally just protecting that priest right there in that. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's noted fact what you're, what he's saying that these, the Archangels are absolutely humongous, you know, so. Yeah, they're, they're, they're bigger. They're, they're like Titans. Yeah. 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 No, yeah I, 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 <laughs> Until he said, he goes, all he knew is he, when he put his hand up, he said the one part of the, you know how it would look like a loop, like these little loops. Yes. He said it was like three to five times as bigger than his hand. And he's like, when I put my hand on it, I just knew who it was. I didn't look up, but I knew who it was. I'm like getting goosebumps. Yeah. I know. I was, so I was like, really? I was like, my boy came through. <laughs> Modus operandi, you know, you don't know why they're there sometimes to help and sometimes they don't seem accessible. Mm. You know, you know. Yeah, but yeah, so that's that's the only but I've never heard of the angel. I've never heard I actually haven't heard of anybody really ever talk about having that's the first time I've ever said that story. To be honest with you, because oh, I've never sure. heard of it. Yeah, I never heard that story. I didn't yeah. even interrupt you. I wanted to hear all your story. You know. <laughs> well, we're here together. Yeah. So, but that's interesting. I, I would love to have that person on that that you know that's uh, investigate. I've never heard of that. I want that. I want to talk to her. 
Yeah, she's a very interesting person. I'm actually, yeah. tr I'm trying to, even if it's afterwards, even if you guys just hear, I'm trying to look for that recording right now. So, um, so good. Did she? Uh, does she have other books too, or is this uh, something that she's first starting out with? Like her first big compendium. Like I don't know if she's wrote books before, but this is like her first big compendium of like, like angels. Like I don't know anything else that has been written to this extent. Um, I know Athena Balk uh, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. was doing something very similar, but even Athena uh, compiled her stuff with Lola. So, uh, no, she yeah, really yeah, she took that was the story that I told her. It just happened. Now, Athena reached out to me about I didn't Angel, know that about Athena. Angel they, story. Well, Athena actually is uh, somebody that speaks to angels. Actually, yeah, and I really, yeah. And I like really do news. believe that. Like she, she's the Oracle told, of Delphi, that kind of concept. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She, she's like a seer. Yeah, like yeah. the um, But that's so funny you said that because literally it was right after that experience that she asked if I had any angel stories that she was doing this project. I'm yeah. like, you got to be kidding me, Athena. I have something for you. So I we got on the phone and started talking about this experience. But it's just so funny because like she like hit the nail. Like she literally was right there asking this question and it was literally a week prior that it happened. Oh yeah, she's she's got, she's gotten me some oh and she's the one that did see Saint Michael behind me. And last time she saw fairies with me. Remember she saw oh, fairies. Yeah. <laughs> So if you, if you, I, I don't know how well it's going to play, but I'll Jim play, I'll play sure. some of it. Yeah. 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 Are you sure? This is private for you. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. Yeah, you can't say they can't believe me. So for people that just joined us, tell us what you're doing. I'm playing a recording of an experience that we had somebody, um, I do believe, in, not in a bad way, but being possessed by an angelic spirit, uh, an angelic Entity or deity Ex expressing through that expressing human through that human yeah. person. So was it in another language or it was actual English? It was like broken no. English. Um, mm -hmm. broken English. Um, 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 so you handle voice of Ask. 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 Human. Uh, not about soul. Not about soul. Right now. Right now. Right now. How are you? Um, yeah, I'll let you guys hear more about it later. Wow. Did you hear that? Did you? Yeah. So the 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 woman that's speaking was the per was the person that was being uh, uh, spoken through, and uh, channeling, so to speak. But uh, some of you guys do know the person, but um, uh, for the individual, um, it definitely wasn't the way she would speak. It was definitely broken. It was trying to interpret in the way that it could interpret to us. Um, yeah, you could tell. It sounded almost boxy. Yeah. Yeah. But that, yeah, I, why I believe it was angelic in many forms, and people will dispute this, of course, but a little bit of the story is we, were, we went all the way, and this was, of course, at my pocket. Uh, me and a bunch of people went to a case in Arkansas, 22 hours uh, from Rhode Island, and uh, we did 22 hours back, of course, and within the same two days. But uh, we went down there for a case, and we had helped the client, and uh, things, there were children involved, and we had felt like that we had kind of concluded, yeah. broken through, and we went on our merry way back home. And one of the people that I had, I do believe is a very gifted energy worker. I, I've used her on many, many cases. A little crazy, but I love her to death. 
Uh, but, Aren't we all? But uh, very <laughs> gifted. She's blown my mind uh, on many different occasions where she should have known things. I've never told her things, and she's she just had that knowledge. She, she had that knowledge. Um, and um, on the way back, you know, we we're I think we we're in Tennessee at this point. No, uh, we stopped at Carl's Jr. Got to throw Carl's Jr. in there because it's the best. Yeah, we but um, we stopped in Carl's Jr. and on the way after that, and why this is a pivotal moment because I, I remember Carl's Jr. and everything else was basically a blur. But in that same form of fashion, um, the client called and said, "We're seeing a shadow outside." I, are you, I, we're like, "Are you sure it's not like somebody?" No, it's a black manifestation that keeps pacing outside the window. And they felt like it was trying to get back in. So um, the person that was influenced by the, the uh, I want to call it maybe demonic. Some people wouldn't. Maybe it was demonic. In, in human anyway. In, in, in human in many forms. But um, this person that has this ability, I, I knew what she was doing. And she didn't mean to do it. I, I guess there was some influence there. Um, but she pulled a picture up of the little girl that was mostly being afflicted by the situation. And she started chanting. Like she was, what this person went into a trance um, and wow. like basically started pulling what was at this person's house towards us while we're driving, mind you, in Tennessee. While you're driving. And, and this is all happened while we're driving. Um, so we, it was me and the Nella investigator, and there's two mediums. Um, one medium basically did not do trance. But within this whole standpoint of time where we're, uh, she's doing this, um, this medium passes out. The, the medium in the back seat as well um, goes pale white and passes out as well. And basically, there's a split time where we're freaking out. Mind you, that investigator's driving. I'm in the back seat. How long ago was this, James? Oh, uh, this is many, many years ago, like four or five years ago now, probably. But um, so we're driving and he's freaking out, like, what's going on? I'm like, oh, God, I don't, I don't have a great feeling about this. There was a whole atmospheric change within that car. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, this is where it gets crazy. These Both these individuals started attacking us. Mm -hmm. um, the one in the passenger seat tried to start attacking the person driving, and the person in the back seat with me tried to try, started attacking me as well. So, mind you, we're trying to fend these people off while he's driving. I'm trying to fend them both off at the same time. He's stiff on our. We both have martial arts backgrounds, so in some form or fashion, you know, it's easy to do subduing of these people. Right. But they're 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 very strong beyond what they were capable of. And I want to say superhuman strength. The person who's taken over at the but time. Both per, per people. Both yeah, but, yeah, but even if not, just the fact that they started doing that out of nowhere, yeah. so, you know, is weird. Uh, my, my, my best conceived notion is that let's find a uh, holy ground, like a church or something like that. Let's pull into a church mm -hmm. so that we're not just like pulling on the side of the road or we're not just pulling in front of like a McDonald's. <laughs> right. We're pulling in a place that I believe that. Sacred ground. Not yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, sacred ground. Um, where we have kind of like a step over what's going on. Right. We pulled these people out of the car and we're, I'm doing, this is where I started doing a tirade of prayers and deliverances over these individuals, even do a salt circle. I'm pulling out like freaking pagan rituals. Like I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything in my, my nature that I've known and I've studied countless many years and I'm pulling it out of my utility belt. And I'm, I had a gallon of holy water it was gone by the end of all of this. But so, but the craziest thing, and this is where a lot of like things occurred where I think that there was a supernatural element to this and it was not psychological was at some point during that they stopped attacking us and they started stop feuding with us. And there was, uh, uh, they weren't able to talk, but they both started like rocking, like something out of a movie. They started rocking. Yeah. Back. Fourth. And that'd be and, at the time. And it this sounds kind of spooky right yeah, now. It is. And they, uh, yeah. And I'm freaking uh, this is where I freak out mostly, even though I'm already like I, I'm on the phone with another uh, uh with a shaman. I won't say their name. Right. I know a lot of people were kind of uh like this whole situation kind of was of dismay. 
But this, I was on a phone with a shaman. Like I'm calling everybody that I can call that I know that was able to pick up and try to try to give me some advice. And you know, I put them on a speakerphone so they can hear what's going on, so they don't think I'm freaking crazy. Um, out of a sudden, when we're in this church on uh, on this ground, they both without communicating, because we're mind you, we have their eyes on them, you know, and the, they start rocking back and forth. The cops are coming. The cops are coming. The cops are coming. <laughs> and I'm like, that, and I like, I'm like, we're going to go in a padded room tonight or we're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> we, threw them, we threw them in a car again. <laughs> we started driving again while we're, they, they're attacking us again. Oh. We left items like I, lo I, I lost my crucifix I there, my rosaries. Stayed there, I, remember. Um, I lost items there. Um, and I'll, I'll finish, finish this up quick so I know we're out of time probably. But um, mm -hmm. we got to Anella Church. You know, we find we I didn't we're not even GPS and we find it. <laughs> we find it by find all these churches. <laughs> well, Tennessee, it's but this is a southern belt, you know. So yeah. they're, they're all religious down there. Um, yeah. So there's churches everywhere. So we find a church that is secluded more deep, deep within with uh, clouds of um, trees surrounding this uh, church. So a little bit more privacy. So we're not getting like a rest or something like that. Because I don't know how I would have explained this. Like, I don't know if right. we would have tried to attack the cops. I don't know what would have happened. So right. um, we, and mind you, there is some importance to this. We looked at the weather because we wanted to know what the weather was while we were going to drive. It was crystal clear skies. We got to this other parking lot, and this is where it gets really, really even spookier, is it started downpouring and lightning and thundering out of nowhere. It wasn't even in um, the, the Doppler radar, anything like that. It started raining. Um, it started lightning. It started thundering. And in the, in, the, in the forest line or the tree line, you could just start seeing red eyes appear. And this and it doesn't sound believable, but uh, it's just so. But here, I know you. I know you. <laughs> so we see red eyes appear, and this is where I'm like praying heavily, like God, please, you know. I think the power of prayer is very powerful, regardless of what belief system. Uh, one thousand percent. Um. So th this is where I'm like praying while we're still like I'm on the phone. I'm still trying to do things, and all of a sudden, um the person in the back seat with me just passes out. She like faints and like, I check her pulse at one point. I really did not feel a pulse. Um, and she stayed passed out, but then she regained a pulse like, Oh, so she's not dead. Um, but then the person in the front seat went from a, a very malicious based, uh, personality to where the rain stopped, the, eye, the, the red eyes disappeared, the lightning, the thunder, the rain just, automatically stopped like we were in Florida. Um, it was such a weather, weather change. And basically, the car light, uh, even the stars came out. And everything was intensified, bright. Um, even the car light got brighter. Um, and this is where the personality changed, where um, we felt like we were actually talking to this angelic uh, being, which um, said its name was Azdatie. Exactly. And um, so it, what was crazy about uh, the whole situation, uh, not just that, we recorded, which you well, some of it. recording it, does we, we, re we recorded it, yeah, as Dazier. And that's we recorded Dazier. that because it was a fundamental time where I knew if I didn't record this, it was just a story. Um, hmm. So I recorded it. And after that, the person that was afflicted and then, of course, interjected and then uh, influenced by an angelic being did not remember anything. We basically she 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 lost her consciousness and didn't remember anything until like a little few minutes after Carl's Jr. She's like, what happened? Where are we? Like, it was just like a sudden shock to her. And we we're like, you don't remember any of what happened. So we right. were some of the recording. We told her like like we were like NFL uh, like play-by-play uh, -play commentators like this is what happened this is what occurred then the person in the back seat came to themselves and like said the same thing she remembers bits us uh, um kind of bits and pieces of what what mm -hmm. happened more than another person did but what was the craziest thing to kind of add the cherry to the topping of all everything that was happened in, in this crazy wow. moment 
is we went back to the because I re, I re, we kind of retraced our steps as best as we could, but we did find the old church because I realized I lost my crucifix um, that was gifted to me. And I lost my rosaries and other items that were very you important want all these to me. Back. I wanted these items back because they were important to me. Of course. Um, we got to the church parking lot. Guess what was there? Two cops waiting in the parking lot. And this was probably within an hour or so time frame. So when we came back to that church uh, parking lot, there were cops there. Wow. So, so if we did not listen to that warning or if it was a warning, whatever it was, yeah. but there were going to be that cops would have came. And that we would have been arrested or subdued or some form or fashion of something would occur. Certainly would be detained. For detained. Evaluation. Yeah, yeah, they'd be like, okay, we're getting these people evaluated. Well, it sounded like it sounded like something just was trying yeah. so hard yeah. to get you to not get to your destination. It, it was it was very crazy. It, yeah. I don't, this is actually the first time I ever told a story on live, and uh, you know, it kind of floated in with the angelic, but. Um, in the same form and fashion, it, it, like out of all the demonic experiences I've had um, and people seeing people possessed, <laughs> um, I would say fundamentally this was probably one. It, even th this case even made me uh, uh, stir crazy for like uh, weeks. Like how I, could I, it not? How I could it not? Mind blown. Like I, I, I just like there was questions that we asked that I did not play that like would fundamentally destroy some people's faiths. I think, yeah. in my opinion. And it was they were they was very accurately answered, you know. I, I I believe something was saying, but you gotta also remember was that deception, whichever. So I don't know if I will ever say what was said to me, um, so to say, or play the whole recording. Maybe Lola would hear, but she also said that she would never put it out into right, right, right. Who just wants to hear it. Now, James, was this an instance where it was uh, psychological blending with this, the preternatural or the supernatural, or was this more like a supernatural event? I think this was a supernatural event. Like, I, I, I think the person that I worked with that was an energy worker, There, there's a few, like any of us, there's a few screws loose in the head. Uh, right. Say that meanly, but... Depends on the time of day. But me, just, yeah. just, the atmosphere, just the atmosphere change, the weather change, Seeing the eyes, seeing seeing the, the, eye, the personality change, um, hearing the way that they reverberated their the words. Uh, there were just certain things throughout that whole process. The precognition that the cops would come. Um, it, 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 there's, there's a different energy. You know what I mean? It's maybe, a different energy. Maybe, Not that I know, but I know what you're saying. Like it's just maybe there was some psychological uh, um, part of it. But I, 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 I'm still flabbergasted to this day. Of that. I think you're only saying that because you feel like you have to say that. Well, yeah, of course. That's that's the that's the um, you know the individuals we are. You know, we dissect cases. We don't like to come in and say that this is what it is. Well, like, you like to be analytic and be able to you know like uh, segment, yeah. segmentize it. You know, but it was very eye opening and. Uh, I should say, yeah, yeah. no, it's it just something that I will always remember. And like, I, if out of like I said, all the possession cases and the, the, the infestation cases that I've dealt with or Carl has dealt with, like, uh, you know, specifically for me personally, that would be something that will always go hands down. Like something I will remember detail. And I'm very, so you say that's pivotal to your like I'm very development as a demonologist. I'm very forgetful. Like I forget people's names. I I forget things. I'm that, the same way. Last week, but I remember. I'm as bad from yeah. second to second of everything that happened from that uh, moment to the end of that moment. After that, before that, it's a blur. But everything within that confines of that mm. time frame, I remember detail to detail, and that's not me as a person because I'm very forgetful. So just to remember that, it right. will always be with me. But that's what that's the same thing. Remember, I was telling you guys the last time about that dream I had. How I was like you know and then for like three days four days i walked around and i just felt like i had like my body was just sore from head to toe and i you know what i mean the i've never experienced anything like that ever in my life um and that's the closest i think i've ever gotten to that side of things yeah and i never went there again you know what i mean like because i never never want any parts of that i put that out there and I stay strong with it. I'm like, you know, somebody's got to do it. God bless you guys. <laughs> yeah. But it's not me. Yeah. I'm Casper. 
<laughs> I don't want to mess with none of that. <laughs> I don't even think I was ready for that. And I deal no. with it. So, you know. Well, who's ready for something like that? You know? Yeah, I just never expected uh, that kind of interaction before, you know? Yeah, no, that's crazy. That's crazy. Well, I've kept you for an hour and a half. Yeah, we went to, we were supposed to be an hour show last night. We went to it. So yeah. when you start talking about these topics, you can't just wrap them up and say good night. I know, I know, I don't want to, but you know. Before you have to. <laughs> so. You're going to have us on again in a month? Well, yeah, you, we're going to do a month. I have a. Uh, before last, Christmas. Stop. Yeah. I have the last Wednesday saved open for you guys. Oh, that's not, that actually, that's not the day before Christmas. That's the. Two days before, uh, that's actually the day before New Year's Eve. So we can at least bring the New Year's in together. So okay. wait, what's in between? What's in between? Wait, what about the Wednesday? What's the Wednesday in between? Christmas is the Friday and Wednesday is the 23rd. So we can either do the uh, two days before Christmas or two <laughs> days before New Year's. All right, so it's up to you guys. What holiday do you want to celebrate together? <laughs> what do you want to celebrate, Carl? I don't know. They all, my birthday. How about that? They all kind of blur together. What's your we got birthday? something on my birthday. What's anyway. your birthday? December 9th. Oh, uh, that's, oh, uh, yeah. I we think do. something. We got something. Yeah, we have X Radio that yeah. day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also, we want to do a, sh uh, a shameless plug. Shameless! Um, oh, my God. No shameless. Plug anything you want. Shameless plug. Yeah. Please. We don't pay you to come on, so plug in. Please, plug, plug, plug. <laughs> Please, guys, um, to this December sixth, well, Carl and I have the pleasure to be on Coast to Coast AM. Yes. Um. So please listen to that. It is monumental. Um. So is it radio or is it internet radio? Is it where is it? Anything you want to listen to Coast to Coast, you can. I believe it is on local stations. I don't know what depends on your proximity to yeah. the station. You know, they have a visual, don't they, where they show George Nori? Yeah, George Nori, yeah. George yeah. Nori, uh, our host, interviewing us. So, interviewing the oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so I love George Nori. That's a big moment. You know, George Nori is interviewing us. So, um, I hope we're interesting that night. Yes, I don't. <laughs> we'll, we'll be in the Stanley Hotel. James. Yeah, we had Stanley that night. Yeah, so, but, but man, I would love to. I would love to. Well, yeah. oh, what is it called? So, uh, how you? So you want to do the, the uh, before Christmas and before New Year's? You pick. You you are the elder of us all. Before Christmas, I guess. Let's do before Christmas. Let's do the twenty third. Yay! Yeah. Are we gonna get? You guys gotta get some um, Christmas PJs. I I I go out. We're supposed to dress up for Halloween. They want a thing too. You know, I'm bad Santa. I already told you. Up, whatever. <laughs> don't because I'll dress up. Oh, you will? <laughs> yeah, don't you be cute. Be <laughs> <Hey>, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so December 23rd. Yay. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much again for an so awesome, awesome combo. Hey, Andy, you're down. And I, I don't know about Carl, but we could just wear stockings. It's where's the star? Stop. <laughs> yeah, just do that. <laughs> oh, there's people that like roast stuff. I wasn't even paying attention. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Krampus, you can be Krampus. Krampus. I can be a Krampus for you. <laughs> Are you? Somebody dress up like the Grinch. Paint yourself green. Yeah. Oh, hey, Athena came on. Oh, Athena's on. We're I told her. I said, come on to the brew. We're talking about you. I did not know. I didn't know. We were talking about uh, angels. You have to come on, Athena, and talk. Like We'll have to plan a date. You have to come on. I want to hear all about your angel. Yeah. Athena knows my story, too. So it, she's very fascinating. She really yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. First I hope first guess in the year. Yeah, you'll have to rewind that, Athena. We were just talking about you not long ago. I like messaged her. I messaged her on Facebook. I was like, go on the brew right now because when we were talking, because I wanted her to yeah. but I want to schedule a date with her to come on. And I want to talk to her. Yeah, and now I'll talk to your lady too, because this is the first I'm hearing about anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, I never heard of anybody saying anything about talking to angels, and I love you, Athena, so much. I had no idea that's what you did. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I was plugging your pro project uh, in there, Athena, about the angels. <laughs> yeah, I, so I want to I want to talk and talk about it. Yeah, I'm on Facebook. Athena knows the long. Like, I know angels. <laughs> the what? 
Um, I said Athena. I, I'm off Facebook, so uh, Athena knows Lola's Facebook account, so maybe she can also direct. Oh, me. okay. Because I don't know her real. I just have her phone number. I communicated to her through the phone, so um, she does have a Facebook though. Yeah, Athena. Um, also, what's her name? Lola. 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 <laughs> yeah you guys are awesome yes i know james story that's what athena said yeah we have to get you on and i want to get lola on yes um for sure maybe um we same time or... oh sorry no that'd probably be hard to do. what i said maybe the same time but that would probably be hard to do well we should have athena as our first guest for the for the new year yeah that would be cool the first week, if she can, you know. be in the new year with an angelologist. All right, so December 23rd, mm -hmm. our awesomenesses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like three, four, I'm a little more reserved tonight. It's been a stressful uh, day. <coughs> Aww. But that would be a show in itself. And it is <laughs> it's very yeah. well related, yes. Really? There's something for the 23rd. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. You save it, yeah. That's why James is the outgoing guy. He's the poltergeist guy today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you guys so much. Where Thanks. are you guys? So what do you guys have coming up? Do you have anything coming up? Like, yeah. Or... Oh, yeah. I think we got uh, postponed and canceled. Mm -hmm. We were going to do you yes. know, COVID concerns and all that. Yes, we're in hibernation right now. I think our next we're big kidding. thing is March. Yeah. Totally really? Cool. We'll cook up something in the meantime, though. Wait a minute. February is phenomenology. We, we were we were invited by Dana, so uh, that's we won't be there, unfortunately. You have to be there. We weren't invited. You guys have to come. Have to be invited. You want us to be there sure. anyway? Yeah, we can crash. I guess we make a yeah. special when we come in. People yeah. come in. Spirit. You guys could be the paranormal Bruce plus one. Yeah. Oh yeah, paranormal Bruce plus one. Yeah, they could work. Yeah. We will be there. Because you're the headliner, so I remember. Oh my gosh, stop it. <laughs> well, I'm, going, I'm just going to party. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> for a good party. Uh, you guys would throw a good party. It would be phenomenal. Oh, it would be phenomenal. <laughs> it's phenomenal. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So sad to, you good. know, yeah. end tonight, but. Yeah. We have December 23rd to look forward to. <laughs> and, uh, Athena said, you know, LOL party. <laughs> party! Wow! Oh, boy. I'm going to have to take off five years. <laughs> just hold it. That's I didn't say it was random. <laughs> chips Ahoy. <laughs> He's like Chips Ahoy. He's oh, like, Chips Ahoy. Yum. Uh, now I'm like, hungry. I need that after our yes. Yes. day. Yes. Yeah, is it every after every um, radio you have some kind of sweets that you eat after or something? Last time I think it was chocolate. Oh, yeah, we've always got some. Ahoy. Pretty much, you know, but these are cookies, so I thought we'd be. We have a sweet tooth. And right? we have a movie night too. I don't know what movie we'll watch, but last last movie I put him through was Midsummer. If you haven't seen Midsummer, that was pretty good. Made <laughs> her watch Midsummer. Uh, it's not a warm, rosy movie feeling, you know. We've already seen The Exorcist. You know? Have you seen Six Souls? No. See that? Watch that. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Maybe. Scary. It's scary movie. It's a... Psychological thriller or more like a supernatural thing? It's a psychological supernatural thing. <laughs> both. Both of, a good world, of both worlds. Like science. Yeah. It's really good. I like that gesture you made there, the, the, like both worlds. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's going to keep us on. She's it's like, a really good movie. I think Juliana Moore's in it. Um, yeah, and then, uh, but it, yeah, it's called Six Souls. What? That's why he changes his kid. Yeah. But she can't see. What? I think, like Athena talking. says, Who's the little boy with James and Carl? <laughs> There's a little boy with me. <laughs> well, that's what wow. it is. You know, he's right. Well, I didn't see that. Yeah, she. Something else. Maybe it's something. Oh, I should have told you some of my Slater Mill stories. We can save that from the twenty third. Like the, <laughs> the disembodied voice that followed me, and it was very. 
very freaky. Is your, is your kid with you? No, I thought no my kid's not here. <laughs> I <should just> <laughs> Hmm. He's protracting himself in the in yeah. The he room. might be. It's probably, she, she probably yeah. It's probably projection. Get out of here! <laughs> oh, oh <my> God. <laughs> hey. hey, we're still on the air. Yeah. Yeah, we are. We are. <laughs> Welcome to Parallel Brew. You are just crushing his eyes. She said he's six to eight and he has dark hair. <laughs> I don't know. Between six and eight years old and dark hair. If it was Sl if I was still actively involved with Slater Mill or involved with Slater Mill at all, I would say that that was our little ghost boy who was in the mill. But I don't think he can leave there. He's never been reported or experienced maybe by psychic people uh, outside of the mill container. But not a museum. No, it was a museum. So, uh, otherwise, I'd say that was Jacob. was about that age. She said, is there a case that you worked on with a little boy? He's gonna keep us on. No, I did. Yes, <laughs> ghost hunts there. Well, I, I think there, there, there might have been something. And there was also Tavern on Main as a little boy about that age, and he has been seen again and again. So there's three possibilities right there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Perhaps from the Oliver House. You know, yeah. where you can read. Uh, you know, like if a spirit is around you, a gifted person can read that impression. It kind of makes a dent in your aura, your aura feel. And uh, sphere, and that uh, then some people can pick up on that. So maybe, maybe. Oh yeah. Little boy, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, after um, the I might think of something. Like, oh darn, that might be it. Uh, I'll tell you next time if I get that revelation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. B. That's my. And he has dark eyes. Dark eyes. Hmm? Nobody I think of or recognize. I never He's more attached to Carl. Uh huh. I wonder if it is Jacob that was at Slater Mill. Mm -hmm. Maybe. He was hurt. Maybe he misses. Oh, yeah, maybe he does. Maybe he's aware I'm not there. Wait, where the fun parties where we called him and spoke to him? Yeah. Nice. Saint it's my Saint Michael. Oh, yeah. An Archangel. And yeah, he's not, I have him. Ta I have him tattooed on my back. Real big, and then on my neck, I have his emblem. Can't talk about it. You got to show it now. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, look at that. It's a breastplate of righteousness. That is nice. Those are nice statues. Those are, those are from Athena, aren't they not? No, they're from Bradford um, Exchange. From Bradford Exchange. Because uh, Athena usually it carries cool things like that. Yeah, she does. She does it. And one of my rings I wear is from Brad. Gotta get the rest of the angels. Oh yes, please get the rest of the archangels. There's four. Yeah, I gotta get the other two. Yeah, he's my boy. Yeah. I feel him like. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Yes, All right, I Athena. Do. We'll get, we'll get, we should get her on in January. We gotta get her on January or something. All right, guys. I love you both so much. I love you too. Thank you. I love you too. Thank you for coming <laughs> on. Yeah, you're making a drink. That's a drink. Great, great. Come back. Sabrina's gonna come back before we. Yeah, yeah. She's coming. She's back. Almost. Maybe. Got your ice. She's still going. Huh? She's mixing. <laughs> She's a barista. She's a barista. I was shaking. I was making a, a lemon drop. Ooh, cheers! Wow, nice. Cheers! <laughs> making my lemon drop. Yeah. See, I just, see I just have my wine. Rim? Got my sugar rim and see. All of a sudden, our viewership is going up with the alcohol. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's like skyrocketing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking. Bartenders in the house. <laughs> <I know. laughs> What did James say? I know. I said I haven't drinking in eight months. I quit drinking, and that makes me want one now. I know. I'm sorry. I know. That's why I was like, we are I was like no, imagine like, me. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about my wine. <laughs> Showing off. Don't break my will. Don't worry. Making my sugar rim and everything. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Listen, after the week I've had, I'm surprised I'm not. Yeah, both of you. Oh, my God. I said you guys have you guys had one week too, huh? Two weeks. Yeah. 
Yeah, I lost my fur baby, my my soulmate fur baby. And I so, lost my aunt to COVID the other day. Oh, uh, sorry. They're both in my prayers. Yeah, so it's been a tough week. And actually, I wasn't even on the brew on Wednesday. I, I couldn't even do it. So I'm surprised see, I'm here tonight. See, I told you. I told you. <laughs> we have new, new. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. It's just, uh, it's been a rough year. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, don't, don't. I'm not saying 2020 is the worst year because I don't want 2020. No, I almost lost my mom, too. Well, my beer. I mean that, yeah. I mean that's what that's what I was I was expecting the year to bring challenges. Yeah, his wife his mother was found in a ditch yeah. like um you know in the cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um she survived though. So it, she survived, thank God. So. It's really a miracle. It really is like this it, is a miracle, definitely. Some of the doctors are like, how the heck, you know? She's a but, fighter. She's a fighter, she's got protection, she's got a guardian, my dad. Probably yeah. was there. Yeah. yeah that, was, was that was something else. Yeah, yeah. but but we Much. are strong people yeah. and we prevail. We yeah. prevail. Yeah. Right? Because we have to. I'm trying not to cry. All right, here I go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I Thanks. love you guys. All right. All righty. Right. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Everybody to tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> December twenty third. Yeah, that I won't. Forget. Christmas PJs. <laughs> yeah, we'll have like. I'm wearing gonna... mine. Oh, I don't know. I'm gonna buy them for you. <gasps> matching, matching. Me and my dog have matching ones. We'll be double gangers from the Portuguese and the Portuguese. <laughs> double gangers from the Portuguese. All right, guys. All right, I'll bye, see you guys later. Bye bye. Love you guys. Uh -huh. All right, love you. Bye. Bye. Oh. Oh. I don't know if she was going.